some guy shared this in a carnivore group and it is just so ridiculous some people will believe everything seriously it's so funny we in the autistic carnivore group we have all the experience and it's a large group almost 800 people and we all know of the benefits of eating meat and how our digestion has improved inflammatory diseases have reversed anxiety levels have gone down depression is gone whatever it's similar like neurotypicals and especially autistics have um, usually a lot of digestive issues so if you go carnivore then those digestive issues will totally clear up so how can meat cause autism it's just so funny to say something like this let's look at that weird study it says autism prevalence and meat consumption a hypothesis that needs to be tested and this was published in 2014 so it says prevalence of asd seems to have increased in recent decades there have been many attempts to find the responsible agent at various levels from genetics to environmental factors in this paper we draw attention to the possibility that one of the hidden agents spurring the rise in autism prevalence is to be identified within the industrial system of food production particularly meat production with special emphasis on poultry meat the paper presents some exploratory analysis demonstrating the correlation between particular aspects of meat consumption and autism prevalence this initial exploration has led to the hypothesis that industrial meat production especially of poultry meat may involve significant risk factors requiring thorough investigation the main suspects seems to be hormonal and other growth promoting agents and of course they don't ever mention carbohydrates never so this shows that meat consumption has actually gone up or at least the pig meat and poultry meat bovine meat has gone or stayed the same more or less but the, this doesn't mean that autism is caused by meat eating seriously not this is just as ridiculous as this correlation with spending on science space and technology suicides by hanging strangulation and suffocation <laughs> or this one number of people who drowned by falling into a pool films nicholas cage appeared in <laughs> <laughs> oh yes and did you know if you consume a lot of cheese then you are at the risk of becoming tangled in your bedsheet. 
And another very funny one. People drowned after falling out of a fishing boat and marriage rate in Kentucky. Totally correlates, right? Oh, and if you consume a lot of margarine, then you are at the higher risk of divorce if you married. And autistics actually also do well if they stop eating wheat, gluten, and dairy is often another trigger. Yeah, so you do much better stopping those. And even more so, the brain needs meat and fat. And an autistic brain, even more so. Really important. We have, uh, it may help to explain why People who eat a plant-based diet or even a vegetarian diet have lower levels of these essential omega-3 fatty acids in their systems. Now, what about arachidonic acid? We don't hear about that one too much, um, but it's really important. So arachidonic acid is an omega-6 fatty acid, and it does all of these amazing things. I've only listed eight things here. I just ran out of room. And so it's really, really important for your cholesterol metabolism, reproduction, uh, inducing labor, for example. That's important. You don't want the baby to stay in there forever. Um, and uh, the development of the brain, coagulation, endocannabinoids. Those are nice, right? So, um, so you want all these things. But it's also, poor arachidonic acid, um, it, it, it helps with the inflammatory response. And that gives a kind of a bad rap among the plant-based community. They say, well, arachidonic acid, you get that from meat. And so um, that causes inflammation, so that's bad, so we shouldn't eat meat. Um, well, first of all, inflammation is really important. We do need inflammation um, as the first step in responding to injury and infection and things like that. And then the next step is healing. So, um, you know, I think it's really important um, to try to fight some of this arachophobia, if you will, <laughs> with, um, <laughs> with, uh, with some facts. And the fact is that arachidonic acid isn't just... Um, involved with inflammation, which can be a good thing. Um, it's also involved with healing. I mean, it's that, it's that complex. So um, these very simple arguments fall apart un under scrutiny. So where do you get arachidonic acid from? Um, um, there is this pathway in the body, which most people still believe functions. Um, linoleic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid that you can get from animals and plants. Um, and it's supposed to convert to gamma linoleic acid and then to arachidonic acid over here. But the fact is there have been numerous studies that have showed, this is a lovely review article referenced down here if you're curious and you don't believe me, um, that this doesn't happen in the body. You cannot make uh, arachidonic acid from linoleic acid. So then what are you going to do? How are you going to get your arachidonic acid? The, I, you either have to eat animals, perish the thought, or... Um, you, you, can, uh, you can get uh, this GLA from certain plant oils like uh, primrose oil, evening primrose oil and borage oil and things like that, um, or from, from animal foods. But, the, but, but that's not as efficient um, as getting the, you won't get as much uh, arachidonic acid as, it, as when you eat the arachidonic acid directly from an animal source food. So for all of these reasons, I maintain that the brain needs meat. That it's, you know, um, you can try to supplement your way around it, that's your choice. But I think evolutionarily it makes perfect sense that we would need to have eaten meat in order for our brains to have developed, formed, and functioned.